I created a wooden backdrop for taking pictures and videos. Here's how I did it. On a snowy January day, I drove myself to Home Deeps, one of my favorite stores for DIY projects. I went to the Hollywood section, where they sell oak and poplar planks of wood, all pre-cut in various lengths and widths. I ended up buying 10 poplar planks that were 2 feet long, 2 and a half inches wide, and a quarter inch deep, as well as 2 planks that were just as long and deep, but only an inch and a half wide. I also bought wood stain in a walnut shade. I would also need wood glue to glue the wood together naturally. And that takes care of materials. I already had brushes at home to apply the stain. And so I worked on my living room floor here and I protected it with some leftover Christmas paper. And I also needed some coins. So that doesn't make any sense now, but I'll explain it later. Okay, so I started laying the planks of the wood on the floor. I was going for more of a backyard deck look as opposed to a country kitchen counter look and by that I mean I wanted the planks to have small gaps in between them. So to achieve this look I put quarters in between the wood planks, one quarter on each end of all the gaps. Canadian quarters are thinner than nickels and are thicker than dimes and of course we don't have pennies anymore so the quarters worked out perfectly. And of course this is just my preference, you can use any coin you like to. You know how earlier I said I needed wood glue for this project? Well, that wasn't incorrect, but I already had something in my house that I thought would do the trick. A year and a half ago, I gave my bathroom a little reno, and I had some leftover adhesive caulking, about half a tube's worth, so I figured if it was good enough to adhere rubber wood to ceramic, it was good enough to attach these pancake-thin wood planks, so I used that instead. I squeezed out the caulking close to, but not quite at, the ends of each of the wood planks. Pretty simple. Then I took the skinnier wood planks and set it on top of the caulking. I press it down, and then I use the other plank to kind of line them up. Then I do the same thing on the other side. Within a few minutes, I pressed down each side again. At that point, I was done for the day. It was time to let things set overnight. The next morning, I flipped it over and this is what it looks like. The adhesive caulking worked, it was dry, I was happy, and now it was time to start the staining. I turned the can of stain on its head to let the pigment that settled to the bottom work its way throughout the tin. The stain was brand new, so I wasn't worried about it spilling out, but if you're working with a semi-used can of stain, you're going to want to be careful when doing this. Anyway, I gave it a shake, opened it up, dipped my brush, and then I started staining. I worked with a variety of brushes throughout this project. The sponge brush was okay, but it was really absorbent, and I didn't squeeze out the stain before it touched the wood, so it was a bit on the heavy side, but oh well, no big deal. I used a skinnier brush and it applied well. It was a little tedious because it was too small, but it did the trick. But it worked really well when getting in between the planks. If I'd missed a step, the light appearance of the cracks would have really stood out. Now I have a slightly wider brush, which made for light work. Oh, FYI, wood stain stinks. Like, it really, really stinks. If you're not able to use the stain outdoors, then make sure you stain in a very well ventilated area. This is very important. It was a really freezing day when I did this. It was minus 8 degrees Celsius outside, and that's 17 degrees Fahrenheit, and it felt even colder with the wind chill. I had my balcony door open the whole time. I was so uncomfortable, I was so cold, but it was necessary. So always keep safety in mind when working with noxious chemicals. This is what it looked like after two coats. As you can see, two of the planks look really different from the others, and not in a good way. I should have noticed when I bought them that they had a bit of a greenish hue to them, almost as if they'd been pressure treated or something. This was not the look, so after a few hours when the stain had dried, I attempted to remove them. After some cajoling with a mini screwdriver, a flat piece of metal from some old recess lighting, and some gentle elbow grease, they came off pretty seamlessly. I had to go back to Home Depot to get two replacement planks. I glued them in like I did the others, 
and painted those over the same way I did the other eight. At the end, here's my finished product. It's an excellent backdrop for videos, but it's an even better backdrop for pictures. And that's it!